How's it going there guys, Dave Nader here, and today I have another movie review for you. A review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This movie follows Peter Quill, or Star-Lord, played by Chris Pratt, Gamora, played by Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista, who plays Drax, Bradley Cooper plays Rocket Raccoon, and Vin Diesel once again plays Groot, although they probably didn't need to get him to play Groot because he's just baby Groot this time around, so he just has a high-pitched voice, but anyways, that's a tangent. And they are the Guardians of the Galaxy, and they're off on a mission, making money, when all of a sudden Kurt Russell, who is Peter Quill's dad, shows up, whisks him, as well as Gamora and Drax, off to Kurt Russell's homeworld, so that Kurt Russell can try to rekindle his relationship with his lost son, Peter Quill, by, played by Chris Pratt. And so you have the Guardians of the Galaxy kind of split in half of this movie, Peter, Gamora, and Drax in one corner, and you have Groot and Rocket Raccoon doing their thing in the other corner. And this movie is very entertaining. The characters, in some ways, I thought were more well done in this movie than they were in the last movie. They get more developed, and, you know, the, certain characters are brought back from the first movie, and they're developed more so, like, much more so than they were in the first movie, like Nebula, who is Gamora's crazy sister, who is in the captivity of Rocket Raccoon and Groot as well as Yondu, who sparks up kind of a relationship with Rocket Raccoon that was surprisingly heartwarming, and they did some pretty good, uh, pretty interesting things in the way of character development with Yondu's character specifically, even more so than they did with Nebula, and it was, in it was pretty well done. Like, I really liked the character of Yondu by the end of this movie, and the dialogue is still good. It's a funny movie. It made me laugh out loud multiple times. I honestly thought the comedy was done even better at times in this movie than it was done in the first movie. I thought it just flowed a little bit better. But the plot of this movie really meanders around a bit. You know, I, it wasn't that I wasn't sure where the movie was going. I, I had a pretty good idea of where the movie was going. It's just in the middle portion of the movie, it just kind of drags and it's not going anywhere really quickly. Because it's the Guardians of the Galaxy, they're split in half, and it's a lot of people just not doing very much. You have Peter Quill, Gamora, and Drax on Kurt Russell's planet, and Kurt Russell was fine in the role, but they just didn't do that much with him, at least not more than I would have expected. You know, it, it, I'm not going to get into plot reveals or anything like that, but... They just didn't do anything with Kurt Russell's character that surprised me. It was fine, it was decent, seeing him try to rekindle his relationship with Chris Pratt's character was fine. Again, that's the only word I have to do, refer to that portion of the movie as. You know, just them on the planet, It really, they're just there for the majority of the movie and not doing very much. Most of the plot progressing has to do with Rocket Raccoon and Groot as well as Gamora's sister Nebula doing their thing, trying to, at a certain point, meet back up with the other half, the Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's not to say that the movie is boring in the middle portion of the movie at all. Again, there's still good comedy, there's good dialogue all throughout that portion, you know, whether it's focusing on Rocket Raccoon and Groot or the other three, but there's also action in the middle portion of the movie and it's good action, you know, it's it's all well shot, the special effects work really well. But it's just the plot that is not really going anywhere, at least not quickly, in the middle portion of the movie. Whereas the first movie had a plot that was just like, go, 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 you know, it's it grips you the whole time and it really brings you along for the ride. It's a great adventurous story in that first movie, in this movie, it just, it doesn't reach that level of, you know, exhilaration that you get from the fast-paced plot of the first movie. But, still, all the actors are very good. What they did with Gamora's character in this movie with, and her relationship with her sister, Nebula, was fairly interesting. Just all the characters, they get developed more. Baby Groot, pretty great. What they do. I mean, not much of the character, he's just kind of you know, obviously it doesn't have dialogue because his vocabulary is limited to three words, but he, he's just so freaking adorable. Like, really adorable, and, you know, he's baby Groot for the entire movie, and it just works. So, so, baby Groot is so likable in this movie. 
and uh, yeah, definitely exposing right now that I'm kind of a softie, but I think I've already done that. But seriously, Baby Groot is adorable. Anyways, and one thing that I will say that this movie definitely did as well and actually better than the first movie is the visual style. James Gunn is definitely a very good director, and the best directing he's ever done was in, uh, or at least I'm talking about from a visual standpoint. Like, if we're talking about making, like, the best movie, then I would say probably Super with Rain Wilson is a better movie than either Guardians of the Galaxy. But anyways, it's going on a tangent. Just from pure visual directing, like, he did a very good job with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and this movie in particular looks fantastic. The visual effects are also great. It's not that the CGI looks real, but the aesthetic design, all the colors, is so pretty. And especially Kurt Russell's planet. That's one thing that I will say is a definite positive about that segment of the movie, them just off on the planet, not doing very much. The scenery is gorgeous, and, you know, it's not like, you know, it's all green screen and CGI backgrounds, and it's not even realistic looking CGI. But it's just still so pretty and so well done in the way the characters interact in the environment. It still makes it feel like a tangible place, despite the fact that the CGI doesn't exactly look photo real. Like, it's just such a beautiful looking movie. The way the camera moves around through the action sequences is very dynamic. It's a great looking movie, even more so than the first movie. You know, a decent portion of that owed to the fact that you know, you get to see a good bit of Kurt Russell's planet in this movie. And it is a very impressive visual sight. Like, the animators who did, you know, all the CGI. Like, they did a fantastic job in this movie. Overall, it's not a well-paced movie, but it is still an exciting movie. It's still a funny movie. Overall, it's very entertaining, and it's filled with characters that in some way are, in some ways are actually done even better than they were in the first movie. And so this movie definitely gets my recommendation. And again, it's got to just make this clear one more time. Just because the middle portion of the movie meanders around a bit, it's not boring at all. It's still entertaining. It's just the plot isn't going anywhere. But still, it's a consistently fun to watch movie for sure. I'm just not going to say that it's as good as the first movie. But overall, I'm going to give this movie, all things considered, a B plus. I was really debating whether I wanted to give the movie a B or a B plus, but overall, especially with the last 30 minutes of this movie, which honestly got really good and they did some very good things with the characters and I liked where all the characters ended up by the end of the movie. It's satisfying and yeah you should definitely check this movie out but yeah overall gotta give the movie a B plus. Anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it please rate and comment and subscribe and if you want to you can also share. Goodbye guys.